Good morning. Uh, we're lucky to be in a room that has such fantastic acoustics uh, designed for the job. Now, uh, this wonderful building, which I'm going to show you a picture of up there, is the library at Alexandria in Egypt. And its ancient predecessor, the Great Library of Alexandria, is believed to have held about 500,000 scrolls. It was at the time, uh, the, which was around 2,300 years ago, the single greatest repository of information, ideas, and data anywhere on the planet. It was obviously then the Google and Wikipedia of the ancient world. Now the text from those 500,000 scrolls would easily fit on a USB stick, and not even a particularly big USB stick. And since the time of the Great Library, everything about humanity has been expanding incredibly fast. Population, wealth, and above all, information. We're now drowning in data. And our challenge, as media professionals, is to try and make sense of it all. There you go. This little box on the screen there is um, a terabyte hard drive. Yours from Amazon for about $80, a bargain. Now that's the equivalent of 1,000 one gigabyte USBs, which means about 5,000 great libraries. Now the exotically named exabyte is one million terabytes. That's it up there. And several exabytes of information are gonna pass over the internet between now and when we all have our coffee. Now all that data, of course, is essentially useless. In this case, more really is less. It's even harder for us to find any trees in all this digital wood. Now, Florence Nightingale is celebrated as the nurse in the Crimean War. In fact, her real claim to fame is she was a statistician. She helped the war effort by working out that far more soldiers were killed by disease and malnutrition than by energy, en enemy action. Now, to prove her point to a skeptical government and a, a numerically challenged Queen Victoria, she actually came up with the Nightingale Rose Diagram, a technique to present the simple message of complex information. And the blue bits around that diagram are showing you the number of uh, soldiers who died of illness rather than fighting and the month in which they died. So from all that raw data, real insight could be gained. And over the next couple of days, we're going to learn a lot about how insight develops in today's media world. This is the uh, Greek mathematician, Euclid, uh, Euclid of Alexandria. Uh, he was very likely a visitor to the Great Library as he lived right next door to it. He's often called the father of geometry. And he paved the way for subsequent thinkers like Fibonacci. This is Fibonacci's famous sequence, where each number is simply the sum of the two before, that go before it. Now, this sequence, when graphed, actually perfectly describes the shape of something like a nautilus shell, and it's also found all over nature in plants and animals. So when interrogated, numbers can contain a rare beauty and insight, which is another feature of today's agenda. Now, the Great Library contained texts by Homer, that's him, most obviously and notably his Iliad and his Odyssey. These were probably the first epic stories to ever be written down. Now, Homer almost certainly didn't actually write them. He was simply acting as a scribe to generations of oral poets. But it was his structuring of those stories which established the conventions that we now use today, characters, plot, timeline, tragedy, and comedy. William Shakespeare and Steven Spielberg, and indeed anyone who's told a ghost story around a campfire ever since owes a great debt to Homer and his epic poems. Now, the best advertising tells great stories because it's stories which really move us and which stay rooted in our consciousness. So over the next two days, our expert speakers and panelists are going to give their thoughts to us about how data becomes insight, about finding the beauty that is buried away in numbers, and about the science of storytelling. Now, the leaders of the ancient world considered it a great honor uh, to be invited to events at the Great Library of Alexandria, and I hope we will come away from this feeling equally privileged to have been here at the Convention Center in Montreux. I think at a minimum, we can be assured of uh, better catering, uh, better air conditioning, and better visual aids uh, than the Egyptians had. 
Let's move on now to a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, we're very keen that all of you participate as much as you can in this conference. You've seen the Twitter feed running up behind me already. FOMG12 is our hashtag. Please use it if there's comments you want to make or if during a, a presentation there's a question that you'd like asked of the speaker, some question that's raised, we'll use it. Secondly, there won't be long introductions to each of the speakers. They're all pretty well known, and all of their background details are available to you if uh, you want to download the Festival of Media app, which has been very kindly sponsored by Microsoft Advertising. Simply go to the app store of your choice, look for Festival of Media Global, and all the information you can possibly want will be in there. 